Good morning, everybody. That was me. Great. Right? Um, great to be with you. Pat Kaltenberger, thank you so much for coming to share your gift of music while Catherine is out on vacation. Uh, let's welcome Pat. It is great having you with us. Um, lots of different announcements in your bulletin. I'm trusting that you're going to read through them. Uh, but the big announcement I want to talk to you about is our migrant ministry with the asylum-seeking migrants. Thursday received a call uh, that the monastery here in town was overwhelmed. Um, out of beds, out of room, and more were coming. And could we help now? And I said, well, what do you mean by now? <laughs> and they said, now. Um, and I said, unfortunately, we can't. This last week we celebrated with our vacation Bible camp. So our campus was covered with the children uh, doing all of that. We just weren't ready. We didn't have all of our plans together of what we need to do for these folks to help them. Um, and so we couldn't on Thursday. Uh, the mission team has scrambled over the last couple of days. We will begin this afternoon. That is a month prior to what we had planned. Um, as if you've been listening to me, I've, have you been listening to me? Uh, never mind. Uh, we had planned to start the end of July, um, taking in some of the asylum seeking migrants here. Our plan was to take one week out of the month uh, to help some of these folks. What happens is uh, when they are accepted into the asylum program, they get a sponsor here who's already in the United States. Most of the time it's a family member who's already come and is a part of our country. And the sponsor then buys them a transportation ticket. Most of the time it's a Greyhound bus ticket. Every once in a while it's an airplane ticket, but as you can guess, those are far more expensive. Um, and so what we'll do then is work with a sponsor uh, to have them get those tickets, get the confirmation number, get it to the person who needs to get to them, get that person then to the bus at the right time, get them onto the bus and off to their sponsor. In the midst of that, then, uh, we need to help them. We need to house them. Uh, most of the time it takes at least two days for that to happen. Uh, so some of these folks will be with us one night, two nights, maybe three nights, we're not sure. Uh, we'll take up to about 24 persons. Uh, we'll be feeding breakfast, lunch, dinner, uh, uh, having some activities during the day for them to be a part of. Room one in our classrooms over us off the grass quad has now become our central hub of storing all the items that are coming in that we need help with. Room three will be open to our guests. It's our toddler room, so the children that will be coming will have a space to play. Room four is our movie theater. Did you know we have a movie theater? We actually have a movie theater with 17 movie theater seats in it, a large screen TV. It's a great room. It connects to the internet and we'll get Netflix. And on Netflix, there are Spanish speaking channels. Um, so they'll be able to watch some of that. Room 67, which is at the far end of our grass quad down by the play center, uh, the outdoor play center, is now all set up with cots that the Red Cross gave us, blankets, sheets, pillows. All of that is set up as a sleeping quarters. We'll use our fellowship hall as our central eating place for all our meals, as a central place for activities. There'll be a large whiteboard in there uh, with each of the person's name and their family members, uh, where they're going, who their sponsor's name is, when their departure is, what their confirmation number is, so that we can keep track of them and help them get to their sponsor. We need a lot of help, folks. Um, and I know this is a difficult issue for a lot of us, and a lot of us are at different points along this issue, and, and how do we deal with the challenges of immigration right now? Um, what I know um, is that I personally am torn in how all of this is happening, uh, but I do know uh, that our government has allowed these folks to come in, has allowed them to be a part of the asylum seeking program. They have to wait, uh, because there are so many, they have to wait sometimes a year for their court date, uh, sometimes even longer. Um, and the best of what our immigration department can do is start the process and then release them into the country. And so what's happening is that ICE does their process and then doesn't have any place else for these folks to go 
And so they take them into the cities and towns and release them. And these folks are just lost. Um, and so they need our help. They, they just simply need our help to stay properly in the system to get to their loved ones and take care of all of that. Um, and so that's what we're doing. Uh, we're just doing some humanitarian aid with some folks that we know are in need. Uh, and wherever we lie on that issue, I don't know. I, I, you know I'll tell you, uh, we had to scramble really quickly uh, over the last couple of days. And I know a lot of you have things that you're ready to donate, to bring to us. Some folks have some pillows. Yes, we still need them. Uh, but yesterday I had to go over to Costco to buy pillows because we needed to have them ready. Uh, we may be receiving guests anytime after 1 o'clock. We just don't know. Okay. Uh, so I went over and I bought 24 pillows. They come in two packs, right? So 12 two packs of, of pillows that are wrapped in plastic. And I had one of the big flatbed push trolleys, right? Piled up with 12 bags of two packs of pillows that are sliding off uh, every three feet. And I'm looking like a dork. Um, and I, I'm trying to push them, and I'm, I've got a handful here, and trying to hold them on. And I got up to the cash register, and, and the guy behind me said, what, are you open in a bed and breakfast? <laughs> and, and I said, well, sort of. Uh, and so I told him that my church is helping with these asylum-seeking migrants, and he thought that was pretty awesome, and the woman behind him didn't. Oh. Hey, this is Okay. Um, it was a really good reminder that there's lots of mixed opinions and feelings and beliefs about that, um, not only in the community, but even here in our own church. I get that. And, um, and so I kind of I just let her be, um, and she needed to speak, uh, so she addressed me, and she said, what about the homeless in California? I know, that's what I thought, too. Um, and I thought, okay, well, that's true. And I, I thought to myself, what about the homeless in Tucson? Um, but um, I looked at her and, and um, square on, and I said, I just want to assure you that my church is really helping homeless people as well. And we're just simply finding ourselves with people in a current crisis, and we're responding. Um, and she muttered a few other things. Um, I get it. This is a difficult issue for a lot of us. And um, is this the right thing to do from a humanitarian perspective? Absolutely. Are we handling this correctly in our country and immigration? Obviously not. Um, but what I do know, folks, is that these are people who are in need. They're in extreme need. And um, when uh, I got the call on Thursday, it occurred to me that uh, Jesus was knocking on the door. Now, some of us remember the old painting of Jesus standing at the door knocking, right? And I thought, um, could I answer the door and ask Jesus if he has an appointment? Or could he make an appointment for next week? And realize that that's not how it works with Jesus. That when he knocks, we're called to answer. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Uh, for some of us, this is a ministry we're excited to be a part of. For some of us, this is a ministry that we oppose. I understand that. Um, and so if you're called into this ministry, be a part of it. If you're not, and you're called into other ministries and missions that this church is a part of, then fully support those too. Uh, I, I just know that these people are in need. And they need our help. And so we're going to start this afternoon. Out in the entryway, here is a long table. You'll find some sign-up sheets. We're going to need people to do breakfast, lunches, dinners. Uh, for today and tomorrow, I think we already have all of the food. If you're willing to help with those meals, we'll work with you on either you getting them and us reimbursing or you donating, whatever, however that works. We're going to need people during the day to help with activities, to... Uh, be with kids. We're really going to need some people to work with them to make their travel plans. We're going to need some people who will drive them to the bus station. We need some people who may have some extra car seats, both forward-facing and rear-facing, uh, because when we transport uh, young children uh, to the bus station, we need to have them properly in car seats, and 
lo and behold, the church doesn't have car seats right away. So we're looking for those. Uh, my grandchildren are going to be sharing their car seats uh, this week. Uh, there's just all sorts of ways that you can help. Uh, the, the probably biggest way that we need help at this church are bilingual Spanish English speakers um, at any level. Um, and so if you are that or you have some friends that are that might be interested in this ministry, have them call the church office, have them tag us on our Facebook page with a message, um, and we'll get them directed. Uh, but that Spanish-English translation is going to be important to us. A lot of us have mobile devices that we can use Google, uh, Google Translator or iTranslator. It's really cool. I can speak English to my watch, turn it, and it will type Spanish to somebody. They can speak Spanish to me. I can turn it back, and it'll read English to me once I figure it out. <laughs> okay? So that's one of my tasks this afternoon uh, to figure all that out. So there are ways that we can help those who are not fluent but might have a little experience in Spanish uh, to help us. So um, that's where we are, um, and that's where we're headed. So let's take a moment. We'll pray for this ministry. We'll also take a quiet time, just our own, to come into focus on God's presence with us this morning as we prepare to be in worship. Let's pray. Lord, we need your help. We need your help to help people who need our help. Lord, our nation needs your help. Speak to the hearts and minds of our leaders and legislators. Help them to listen to each other and to find ways to resolve this. Guide us this week as we reach out with our hands that all those who come our way might feel yours. Lord, here we are simply place ourselves before you to become aware of your presence that's not only here in this place of worship but is in every part of our lives. Our singing this morning, our praying and our simply being together, resonate out into the world so that others might feel something's going on in here that they might want to be a part of. May there be more than a thousand voices who sing. May all the world sing God's praise in Jesus the Christ. Come, let's rise and sing our praise. Oh 
Gracious God, we come from the north, from the south, from the east and the west, not only to sit at table, but to gather our voices together, to proclaim our faith in you, to center our lives in your grace. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for not only creating, but redeeming and sustaining Thank you for not only promising forgiveness, but showing us that you're willing to go to every part of the world and to every end of the plan to give us that grace in Jesus our Christ. Thank you for raising him from the dead, that we might know that nothing can separate us from your love, and that your plan will be fulfilled. You are in charge. Thank you, God for your incredible grace. To you be honor and glory now and forevermore. Amen. in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen amen grown-ups may be seated and the kids can come join me. Do you want to come join me? You might be my only one. Max! Come on, pal! Dad, you can come with him. That's fine. Come on, Max. Right down here, Max. Woo here I am. We're coming all the way down front. Jump, good jump. Another one. Great jump. Nice step. Come on in here. Hey, you want to come with me? Come on. I love your shirt. How did you get tools on your shirt? That's the coolest. Look, see this table? So this is a table that uh, one of our members of our church helped to prepare uh, for us for this week. Do you see that cross? Isn't it beautiful? It's got a a bead on it and a little angel on it and it's full of different colors on it and you've got colors here right and she prepared this for our migrants who come from a very long way they most of them who will be with us this week come from a country called guatemala Why? because that's where they live in guatemala and guatemala is down south of mexico if you kept walking you'd run right into guatemala and in guatemala when they gather for worship, whoa! They use things that they can see that are bright and they're full of color and they, they love all the different colors. And so they often have this icon of Guadalupe and they have flowers of different colors. It is. Isn't she beautiful? It's a dress. She's wearing a bright, colorful dress. And they have candles that they light sometimes when they want to pray for somebody special or they want to thank God for something or they're asking God for something. They use all sorts of colors. Why does that have fire? Because we haven't turned it on yet. 
That's why it doesn't have fire, because I didn't want to burn your fingers or anything. We don't play with fire. Right, that's how you blow it out. You're right. So we created this table so that they would feel comfortable because this is a part of what their worship space might look like back at home. And we got some Spanish Bibles for them to read, and we got some little prayer shawls they can take with us, and we got a basket full of papers and pencils that they can write notes and some prayers on. And uh, we can do that later. Um, and then what we hope they'll do is to gather in a space here to worship. And I wanted to show it to you because we like to do things with color too. Do you see that banner way up on that wall over there? And do you see those banners way up on that wall over there? Turn around. Watch over here. Look. See our, right up over there? How brightly colored they are. You see the butterfly in there? And look over here. Do you see the flowers that are on our table and the candle that's on our table and the green that's on our table that represents the green part of the season? Do you want to blow that out? After worship, you can blow that out. <laughs> Ushers, Max is in charge of the candle after worship, just so you know. Maxie, come back. I'm not done. You're like most people here. They're done with my sermon before I am. Um, one of the reasons I wanted you to see that we have this here is that we want to honor people in their faith traditions. You have like that, don't you? And we want them to honor ours because we're all worshiping God. Most of the people that are coming are Catholic, and so we want to honor their tradition and help them honor ours. And we all want to worship together to show that we can actually get along. And if we can do that as a church, we can teach the world how to do that. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for times that we can worship together and differently. And thank you for all the different ways that each of us worship, but may it all be about you and to honor and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming. Now you can go back. Okay. All right. Got it? There you go. Thanks, Deb.
Thank you, choir. Um, and let's take just an extra moment to thank our choir and all our musicians today. We like to give them a break, and they like to take a little break during the month of July. They won't be singing together. They'll be singing out in our midst, helping to build us as a congregation, singing. Um, and your music is just always stunning and always lifting us into God's spirit, and we really are grateful. Uh, thank you for the gifts that you share. Uh, there are so many ways to support the life and the ministry of this church. I thank you for all the ways that you do that. Uh, during our time of offering, take some time to sign in on those red guest books that are somewhere in the pew. Share them back and forth, and let's be a part of this offering in whatever ways are right for each of us.
praise your name. Thank you for all the blessings that are in our lives. But thank you also for the call to be a blessing to others. To give from what we have and what we could use. That others might have enough. So we seek your blessing upon these offerings. That it's about you. And your grace. And your generosity. And how we simply get to be a part of it. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Our scripture focus this morning is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 9. Um, kind of a challenging time in Jesus' life and in the disciples' life. Starting at the 50, 51st verse. When the days drew near for Jesus to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him. On their way, they entered a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him, but they did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. When his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. And then they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another he said, follow me. But he said, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. But Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Sure about that? It's kind of a weird, tough piece of scripture, isn't it? You just got to love the disciples. <laughs> this is a, a strange little section with some really weird little quips and quotes that are kind of all tucked together by the, those who edited the story into a little section about sharing the good news, sharing the gospel. And oh, those disciples. There's a town up here. A Samaritan town. Jesus is a Jew. Jews and Samaritans don't usually get along, right? If you remember some of the history of the Israelite Jews, uh, so the Samaritans were people during the diaspora, during the scattering of Israel, who were told when they were conquered that they were to stay true to their faith and their tradition, not to marry into other cultures, not to bring other pieces of other religious cultures into their own to stay pure. And some of them didn't. Some of them intermarried. They were known as Samaritans. Their children were half-breeds of a sort. And those who had remained true to the Jewish tradition were full-breds, and they felt themselves superior. It was a mess. It was a disconnect. But remember, Jesus told a story about a good one who reached beyond those boundaries and helped a person in need. So there's some very interesting tension going on in the story. As he approaches, he's, he's going on to Jerusalem, the main center of Judaism. He approaches this Samaritan town. They don't want him. He's a Jew, right? And so the disciples are like, let's rain fire on them. Now that's a good way to share the gospel, isn't it? Right? Which is actually the way a lot of people do. Look at how a lot of Christians are out in the world sharing the gospel.
sure makes you want to be a Christian, doesn't it? In all reality, all of those pictures reflect the image of Christianity to the world. And in many ways, it's still how the world sees us. And if I weren't one myself, I sure wouldn't want to become one if that's what it's about. It, it has always been something about us Christians that has tried to force ourselves onto others with a force that doesn't have to be forced. We sing the song, they'll know we are Christians by our force and our hatred and our condemnation. <laughs> and despite the song singing love, so many times that's how publicly the world sees Christianity. I think also in part because those of us who don't see Christianity that way and know the love and the grace of God and want to share it are sometimes afraid to do it. Afraid to speak for what condemnation we might get coming back at us. Afraid to share because we're just not fully trained in the theology. We're, we're afraid we'll say something wrong or we'll be asked a question we don't know how to answer. Or It's just scary. But I really do think, I really fully believe that you and I in this room, who are people of incredible generosity, who understand the grace of God, who don't have it all figured out and are still stumbling through our faith sometimes, trusting in God sometimes, doubting God sometimes, getting it right sometimes, getting it totally wrong other times. It's, it's us who ought to be making the news. I wish that the world saw Christianity like us. And I think it is on your shoulders, on our shoulders, to share the good news of what God has done for us in Jesus the Christ. And to invite people into it. And I know that I get paid to do that. In here not out there. And so I understand that out there it's a scary place to do that, but folks, it's a lot easier than you think. Turn to the cover of your bulletin. Grab something to write with and walk with me for a moment. And let me show you how. Grab something to write with. I want you to take a moment and jot down some notes on the cover of your bulletin to this. What are ways that God has moved in your life? Jot them down. Jot a key word. Jot a quick phrase. Jot a sentence. Whatever. Take a moment. Where have you experienced God moving in your life? Now take a moment. One thing with God for which I am thankful. One. I know there's more than one. Pick one. Just one. Just pick one. One. Now jot a name down. Who could you share that with? I know there's a world that needs to know it, but pick one person you could share that with. Maybe you don't know their name. Maybe you do. Maybe it's your spouse. Maybe it's your kids. Maybe it's your grandma. Maybe it's your pastor.
Now imagine yourself going to that one person to share some way that God has moved in your life, something with God that you're thankful, and they don't want to hear it. And so your first thought is, let's make rain of hellfire and brimstone fall on them. Right? Isn't that what you want to do? No. It's a person, obviously, that you wrote down that you know, that you have some sort of caring relationship with somehow. Otherwise, you wouldn't have put their name down. And so you want to share with that person in a loving way, a way that God has moved in your life, and something for which you're grateful in God. And whether or not they want to hear it, what you want to do is simply share it in a loving way until they're really ready to hear it. And maybe they won't ever be. But that's not your concern. That's God's job to take care of after you share it. You see, that's when the Holy Spirit will really work in your life if you'll let God do that. And we think sometimes that we have to have a seminary degree in order to do that. It's not true. If you'll just take just this basic format of thinking through in your life some way that God has moved in your life, something about God for which you're grateful, and simply share that with somebody, then you've begun the process of what Jesus was inviting the disciples to do in sharing the good news of what he was doing in this world And you now have moved from becoming a disciple into an apostle. And it doesn't have to be complicated. It may still be a little bit frightening, but it's a lot less frightening if you know that it comes simply out of your own experience. And listen. And let God work through you. There is no doubt around this world that membership and attendance in church life is declining, not just here in the summer, right? But across this country and across this world. And I think part of the reason is that those pictures are still what people see about the church. And we need to let them see a whole different picture that you and I know of that draws us back here week after week. And it's these questions, it's these statements. You know God has moved in your life some way. You know some one thing that you're grateful for with God. And you know someone you could share that with. And just perhaps, it'll be just what they need to hear to turn their life to God and help them understand a part of what you understand yourself. I promise you the Holy Spirit will work through you. Always does. The outcome isn't up to you. But the sharing is. And you cannot keep it to yourself. God is calling us to share this good news. It's not so hard as you think. And oh, by the way, every day this week, I'm going to be praying that God puts somebody right in your face so that you have a chance. Take the chance. And share the word. It's just that simple. Don't make it so complicated. You don't need a poster on a sidewalk. You just need your own experience and to share it. Are you in? <laughs> Anybody in? Okay. There's a few of us. There's a few of us. That's all right. It's a start. The rest of you that aren't quite in yet, I get it. It's a little scary still. Don't let it be. Get ready. Someday, may not be this week, God's going to put somebody in front of you and give you a chance to do just this. Because I'm going to be praying for that. Amen.
as we come into a time of prayer. Some folks I want you to be attentive to in your prayers. Um, good news. Uh, Janet Rowe had back surgery, came through the surgery okay, should go home tomorrow uh, from the hospital. It will be a long recovery for her. A lot of laying flat and not twisting or turning. It was back surgery, uh, opening up the uh, central line of the vertebrae and clearing that out, but she's doing better and we're grateful for that. Uh, Don Custis, we've been praying for. Uh, most of you know that Don had a brain tumor. Um, and so we've been waiting on pathology report. Here's the pathology report. It's an atypical tumor. I said to Don, what does that mean? It means they're not going to call it benign and they're not going to call it malignant. They're going to just watch it. It's atypical. They're not sure. Uh, they'll figure out some regimens of treatment. She's doing well. She's at home. She's recuperating, getting some of her balance back after having uh, brain surgery and all that that entails. Um, and so she's doing okay. She's in really good spirits, and she's trusting her doctors will lead her through this. So that's the best of what we know right now, uh, but we're grateful for that. Daryl Dunifin was in the hospital this week, discovered that he had 90% blockage in two arteries to his heart that were affecting 85% of his heart. Uh, had stents put in, and things are open and flowing and running, and hallelujah, he was at 8.30 worship this morning. Um, so that's really good news, right? Uh, Pat Schneider had some surgery this week in her uh, lower left abdomen to remove uh, uh, tumor's kind of growth, um, and she's doing really well and at home recovering. It was fun to see Pat the day after her surgery. Her nails were perfectly done. <laughs> and I said to the doctor, thank you for not disturbing her nails. <laughs> because that's very important to Pat uh, with that. Uh, please pray for my wife's sister, Cindy. Uh, she has the same kind of tumor that uh, Dawn Custis has. Uh, just discovered that Cindy has a large brain tumor. It's the size of a baseball uh, in the top of her head here. Uh, she will have the first of at least two surgeries tomorrow where they'll remove about half of the tumor. Uh, feeling like removing it all at once may be traumatic, too traumatic for the brain uh, in space, and um, so she will have uh, a brain surgery tomorrow to remove half the tumor and recover from that and then have the other half uh, with that. Um, I'm going to move all the way over here to Charlie. Um, Charlie and Jennifer and their family are new in our church family. Um, Jen couldn't be here today. She's got some uh, challenges with her vision. Uh, they and their kids have become a part of our church family. Uh, Charlie's in the Air Force, right? Um, and is leading a squadron overseas um, into a very difficult part of our world. Uh, starting tomorrow and home somewhere the end of August, we're hoping. Okay. So our prayers need to be with Charlie. I'm going to lay hands on him, and I'm going to invite you simply to open your hands toward Charlie uh, for his safety and his safe return. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for surgeries that are successful and the hope that others will be. Thank you for your presence in every part of our lives. May Charlie feel your Holy Spirit with him and all those in his squadron. May his leading be safe that he's not, a, not only able to come home to his family and to us, but to lead his squadron home. And oh, so many others that we long to have home. We thank you for the courage of those who serve in our military. And their willingness to open their lives for the safety and freedom, not only of us in this country, but of people throughout the world. Lord, we're asking for your protection over Charlie and a constant awareness of your spirit with him. We boldly and humbly ask this in the name of Jesus, who shows us your presence with us no matter what, no matter where, no matter whom, even as we pray together the prayer he gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but to 
deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You're going to want to stick around for the uh, postlude today. Let's probably let's make it in honor of Charlie today. But let's rise and sing our praise with our closing hymn. <laughs> around this table that we gather in this room. It's a table of grace and a table of love. So share the good news of who God is in Jesus with Jesus' grace and Jesus' love. And let them know about God's love through your love. Let's make sure that the world knows what God's really all about. May we know that peace and may you share that peace with one another in this room and share it with all that you meet until we meet again. Live in peace. Amen. Amen.